Nobody's going to hook you for not doing something. Nobody's going to expect you to tell the truth or not. If you wear somebody else's dress, just shut up. If somebody say you look good in it, you ain't got to tell them how much you paid for it. Just right. sit back. Am I right? But I ain't tell you how much I paid for nothing. Amen. Because sometimes when they tell you that they lie, they ain't paying nothing for it. Yeah. It's like, I'm, I'm rambling, but I know I am. But I want you to know one thing. God is looking for a people. And I think I was in Corinthians. No, I was in Philippians when I was reading that a little while ago. And he was saying that he wants a perfect people. Hello. Amen. Be perfect people. And why are you going to be perfect? By not lying? You ain't got to lie. You don't have to steal. You don't have to commit adultery, fornication, or nothing. None of that. You ain't got to do that. Wearing pants is not a sin. It's tight, but I'm like. One of the members said last night she couldn't come because she had that work. She wasn't going to have time to go home and get dressed. And I said, well, come as you are. She said, I got no pants. I said, come in here. And nobody better not say that to you because we looking for soul. Ain't nobody All right. there is making right. clothes. All right. Amen. Yeah. I'd rather for a woman to be sitting in here and these seats is filled with a bunch of women with pants on than for her to be empty. God didn't tell me to preach no empty seats. He Watch told me it. to talk to the people. Watch and it. he didn't tell you to dress up for me to talk to you. All he right. just told you to hear the word and they are not, not to assemble yeah. yourselves together. The only somebody he dressed up was the preachers. Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> Prove me wrong. When Paul said that the same dress would come in sex, he didn't describe it. <laughs> Amen. When God made you, he made you stark buck naked. And said, that's good. All right. Never put a dress on you. <laughs> Never put a pair of pants on you. Am I right? Never. You right. Oh, uh-uh. But somebody with an imagination said, let's tell the women. They can't, they can't, they can't, they dress like a man. And the Bible said that a woman ain't supposed to wear a thing pertaining to, pertaining to, in the Greek means like. So if we can't dress like the man now, we wouldn't have nothing to put on, because everything you put on, man, got something like it. They call it unisex. All right, amen. Amen. They call it unisex. When I went to get my hair cut, I told my son, I want to cut my like heels, and he did. It's got long. I want you to finish. Got to get back down where it was. And I'm still a woman. Amen. I didn't want it short because I ain't got time to keep on rolling. And when I got in this nappy, y'all don't pay no attention. But we need to know how to serve God. And you need to remember where God has brought us from. And I'm going to talk to you from Joshua. We're going to read a bit from the 24th chapter. Joshua. Where God was telling Joshua to call the heads of the tribes. Because this was Joshua's last time. He was on his bed getting ready to leave the body. And the people were acting up as usual. Because when there's no leader around, people are going to act silly. The Joshua was sick now, and the children of Israel, as usual, just getting out of hand. And the Lord God said, call together the tribes. And let them remember. And Bible said like that. I want them to remember. Let me read, let me read. He said, and now, 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 now. The third verse said, and I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood and led him throughout all the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. Now let's apply that to today. God have taken our father which were hard-working folk. Mm -hmm. My daddy was a lumber, a timber man. They cut timber and hauled it on a train into a small lumber town. But today, you got automatic stuff. You don't hear a timber train. <laughs> Amen. Look at where he had brought our fathers from. Amen. Our children are not reminded enough of the suffering that their forefathers have gone through for them to ride in pretty 
cars and wear good clothes and walk on good streets and live in good houses. They are reminded of what the white man does to them. They're not reminded of the sacrifice that he made. It's more important to think on the sacrifice that it is what the white man did. All right. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Right. Why should I go back hating him because of what he did to my parents when I can think on what my parents went through for me to live better? Oh, Lord. I can remember when I laid on my grandmother's cot sack. My grandmother was four feet tall, a little bitty, little short woman. And I lay on my cotton sack and in high noon, from my Baptist church, not a spiritual church, high noon, when the bell rang and the train was coming, they knew it was 12 o'clock because here comes the sunny land. And the sunny land was a train coming through town. We was on the farm. You could hear the whistle as far away as the farm. And she said, here comes the sunny land. Stick that hole in the ground if she was chopping cotton and hold it and look up and pray. And when I was riding the cotton sack, she down on her knees. And many days I heard her say, Lord, bless one of Don't let her days be as hard as mine. I'm not talking about me for my sake, because I'm all right. But bless her, not let her day be as hard as mine. Sometimes I ride in the plane, I hear saying again, because here I am with nothing per se, hanging between heaven and earth. Yeah. You can't even see the water move in the cup. You riding so smooth because somebody prayed. Thank you. When I set my thermostat and it jumps from cool to hot, yeah. or from hot to cool, that I might be comfortable. I think of the days that we pump water and throw it in the yard that the house might cool off. Yeah, all right. The sacrifice that was made for you to live as you live. That's what we ought to be grateful for. But we forget where God has allowed us to be. We forget that it was the prayer that brought us. It was not the educated man. It was the prayers of them that served him that delivered us. <coughs> Don't want to go there. You want to go to something else. And some of these books you read on freedom is not so. All right. It's not so. Amen. It's not so. It's not so. And I'm glad that I'm old enough and live long enough and live in certain places that I can witness that a lot of things they said happened was not so. Yes, we might have eaten beans, and I still do. We might have cooked greens and beans and cornbread, but when they were eating it, they didn't have diabetes. Oh, yeah. They didn't have bad hearts. That's right. They lived, now they said the blacks used to live long. My great grandmother died in 1952 at 105. Mm -hmm. Lord help me, they was not seen out. Telling the girls the other day, I said, as far back as I can look, I did not have a senile ancestor. Because it's what you eat All right. that makes your mind and what you do. Mm -hmm. And what you see that makes your mind go back. God of you. Alright. Yes, we can. Amen. You keep on eating sugar. And I meant to do a workshop on it. Sugar. I don't know if Bishop remember Reverend Bennett used to work, work right with me all the time. Reverend Bennett is over 100 years old. Mm -hmm. And became feeble in the mind. It's when I had to stop bringing her. But you never saw Reverend Bennett when she was not eating candy. Never. And I begged her, stop it. Reverend Bennett, you don't eat that. And she laughed. She always got in the car. On a long journey, she always had three or four different kinds of candy, cookies, and all of that. Watch your children that you feeding a lot of candy to, a lot of cookies, and a lot of junk, and see how they act. You can't hardly teach them to say Mickey Mouse. Huh? They cause sweets affect the mind. That's right. And psychology declares that most of our criminals come from junk food eaters. And most mothers love their children so they buy them junk, junk, junk. And will tell you that they won't eat that. I can't cook this that. Uh, they won't eat it. Well, you're in charge of the kitchen. And if we go back and remember, and if your parents, if you two know that your parents are good, talk to them about their parents. Right. And you'll find out they did it. They fed you what you spoke to. Yeah. And let's remember how we didn't have colds all the time. Yes. 
Y'all know we have colds all the time. We get ready to have the flu. <laughs> we prepare how to have the flu. Y'all don't get me. So you know I got the flu. I, every year I have the flu in September. I can write it down. To, I don't know if I'm going to get the flu. And some will stay at home because they feel the cold coming. So they stay at home. I'm sorry. 